Hi everyone, Matt Watson here from CarWow. I'm sat in the new Land Rover Defender and next to me is the old Land Rover Defender and we're gonna have a drag race of this slippery slope. But that's not all, we're actually gonna compare these cars in a range of off-road challenges. So what we'll do is see how well they fare against each obstacle and we'll award two points for the car that does best across that challenge and one point to the car that comes second. And if a certain car doesn't finish the challenge because for whatever reason, then it'll get no points. And the car, or the Defender, with the most points at the end, wins. So let's find out if this new Defender really is as good as the old one off-road. So I've got a two litre turbocharged diesel engine it's got 240 horsepower. That has a 2.2 litre turbo diesel with 122 horsepower, so it might suffer in this drag race. I've got very clever electronics in this car, so I can put the car into a special sand program, because this is sand-like, this surface, and I'm in low range mode, and basically the car's just gonna figure everything out for me. I don't have to do anything. That is a lot more manual. It's got it in low range mode, but it's gonna pull away in second gear, which will give you enough punch to get up the hill, but means that he can just stay in one gear to go all the way up it. Good luck to him, eh? <laughs> I've got an automatic, it's easy. And he doesn't have all the clever electronics. There's no lockable front or rear diffs in either car, just a lockable centre diff. He's got that locked, the car will decide when and if he wants to lock the centre diff on this. Anyway, let's get on with it. But before we do, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you will not miss a single upload. Also, if you're thinking about buying a new car and you want me and my team to help you choose which is the right car for you and make sure you get a fair deal from one of our trusted CarWow dealers, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow, all right? Or if you want to do it at a later date, Google help me CarWow. It's dead simple. Anyway, let's get on with this off-road challenge. Let's These fight. Are the top results. It's Google. Sometimes it just chimes in. But it's worrying, isn't it? Because you know but it's also always listening. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Here we go, let's do the race then. Three, two, one, go! Oh, he got our head. But I'm off now. Blimey neck. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Oh, my balls were big then. <laughs> I was sneezing on the line and then I just floored it and then it's bouncing all over the place. I thought I might go off into the side and damage the car, but I... <laughs> I'm just thinking about the horrible phone call I'd have to make to Land Rover UK about what's happened to their car. But I thought they'd rather that than it lose against the old Defender in a drag race up a hill. Fortunately, I didn't smash it up and it won. So then, clear win for the new Defender. Two points to this, one point to the old car. For this second challenge, we're going to do the exact same thing, only in reverse. The idea is to be the slowest rather than the quickest down the hill. So the last car to pass the cone with the white on it wins. Simple as that. Now, this car can do pretty much everything for me. I'm going to move the terrain response system into auto mode, so I'll have hill descent control, just engage automatically, and I can alter the speed at which that operates using this toggle switch. Dead simple. Not so much for him. So. He's gonna to have to go down in low range mode in first gear, but obviously he's gonna to have to engage the clutch while he's doing it. And neither of us are allowed to hit the brakes unless we absolutely have to for safety reasons. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that gets down there. I think this is gonna be a clear win for this, but let's just do it anyway to illustrate the difference and the benefits of hill descent control. Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. Pull off the brake. Come on. Look at this. I can just basically do bugger all. He's doing a lot better than I thought. Oh, my car's just doing everything for me. <laughs> Maybe I should steer a little. Sitting that way into him. Oh, this is so chilled. That's not bad though. Another victory. So that's two points to this, and one point to that. I think I might be making a mess on the inside of this car, on my feet. <laughs> the third challenge is all about manoeuvrability, which is important when you're off-roading. Now I've jumped into the old Defender. This car actually comes from a company called Neen Overland. So if you want anything to do with old Defenders or even Jeeps, 
cars or accessories, check them out. The link is in the description. This car actually costs £33,000 if you want it. It's a 2014 model. That Defender starts from £44,000. So that particular car we've got there with that engine and the SE trim is £56,000. Let's see how they compare. We've got to run this course and we're going to go around the tree, which is quite a tight turn. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there, whether they can make it round in one go. And we have to stay within the course. My beautiful assistant, Graham, over there, is going to time this on his phone. Whichever car does it in the quickest time wins. Simple. Three, two, one, go! Go on, blast away. That thing's got a turning circle of 12.8 metres, which isn't too bad, and it made it round the tree. Oh, <laughs> flying over there. What did you do, Graham? 25.10. 25, 25.10? 25, right, I'm going to beat that. I think you might. Really? Yeah. Come on, old Land Rover. I've got my diff lock off for this because it'll help with manoeuvrability at the top end there where I've got to do oh, the turning. I don't know what to do with that. Oh, there's no room in this place. I'll do. <laughs> Three, two, one, go. Ooh, traction. The brakes are awful. Come on, get what the hell? Bollocks, this turning circle is rubbish. Come on. 14.4 meters. Oh, that's too low a gear. Come on. That was bonkers. Well, the good news or the bad news? The good news is I didn't crash it. The bad news is I didn't win, I bet. 31.68. It just wouldn't go round at the no. top. Anyway, another win for the new Defender. So that's two points to it, one point to this. So far, this has got three points. That's got six. Now we come to the fourth challenge, which is scaling a steep and slippery slope because it's got various exposed rocks in it, which look a little bit greasy. Now the new Land Rover Defender is going to go first. So both these cars are in low range mode. This one, I'll put the central diff lock on. That car's in automatic mode, so it'll figure out whether it wants to use its central diff lock or not as it's going up the slope. Also, it'll use its stability control to stop wheel spin as it's going up there. This one is all down to me and my skill or lack thereof. So this car is actually the lightest. It's just under 2.1 tonnes, that's 2.4 tonnes. In terms of torque for pulling power getting up there, this has 360 newton metres. That has 420 newton metres. Will that have an effect? I don't know. Or will the tyres? I don't know. We're gonna find out, let's just get on with it. Okay then, Mr. New Land Rover. Do you want to get on and climb that slope? I don't know why I went all northern. Land Rover's a Midland company, isn't it? Should be. All right, mate, are you ready? Do you want to go up that slope? Go on, get up there. Oh, it hardly spun its wheels, really. Traction control in that is so, so good. A bit nervous, but let's do it. Up. Oh. Oh, oh. oh, bloody man, your car's. Come on, you old dear. What a racket and what a load of wheels. <laughs> I made it up, but there was a moment where I wasn't convinced that I would. Let's um, find out from Graham what he thought. How did that go? well <laughs> <laughs> didn't feel great that wasn't my fault just being crap was it it was just no you you done what i asked uh -huh. <laughs> so you were all right there so just got a lock in center diff so no traction control so that was just pure two-wheel drive two-wheel drive one wheel on each axle oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so this comes last one point to this two point for the new defender so after four challenges it's eight to the new defender and just four to this one so far Oh dear. 
Now we come to the fifth challenge and this is all about wheel travel and approach, breakover and departure angles because we're going to drive a course where we're going to go down this hill and the cars are going to go up a side slope so they'll have their wheels in the air. Then we're going to drive around the back over a hill, then over another hill, then up another side slope. Once again, the cars will end up with their wheels in the air and we'll see how they get on. I am going to run in first gear, low range, he's in low range. Let's see if we can do this. Already he's got his rear wheel up in the air a bit. God, I don't want that there. <laughs> There's not much room in this car. You end up banging your elbow on there as well because the door's so close. So I'm going to be like just using brake and clutch, really. That car has air suspension. Ah! And fully independent suspension. This has rigid axles, which should help keep a wheel on the ground. And it should have really good wheel travel. It's doing all right, the new Defender. Come on, oh. Good job this has got anti-stall, which stops the engine stalling. Even when you've got the clutch engaged and you're hardly moving, it just gives a bit more revs to the engine. Oh, that's quite easy. Let's move around over this hill. So, the approach angle of the new Defender is 38 degrees. This one is 50. This has no pedestrian protection, that does, so that's one of the reasons for that. But the breakover angle for the new Defender is 28 degrees, and it's 27 for this, so that is slightly better. And the departure angle of the new Defender is better. It's 40 degrees, whereas for this, it's 34. Oh no, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Am I gonna be able to turn around? This turning stuff is so bad. Ow, I just banged my bloody elbow. <laughs> I have to do a three-point turn. <laughs> Typical, he made it round in one go. Oh, this is an easy piece. I can just chug up here. Look at this. Oh, yes. Hopefully, I won't break over. Well, I've got to line this up properly. Let's see what his wheel travel's like compared to this. If his wheel is in the air higher than mine, it means it's not as good. I think I might have the better of him here. Could be a win for the old dear. Let's find out. Graham, yes. which car won? I think it was a tie. What? This uh, one? Come on. No, this is designed to do that. Yeah. It's got long travel suspension on it. So it won? It won? Yeah, we'll give it a, we'll give it. It give, bloody I'd give, won. I'd give, it, I'd, give it, I'd give it one point more than that one. Okay, there we go then. Yeah. So this, had its wheels in the air less, yes. so more it meant grip. meant yeah more grip. Wheels on the ground mean more traction, which is what you want from me four by four. That uses electronics to help it, so it's not yes. just spinning away power. But this one, all wheels on the ground. Yeah. So yes, two points to this old Defender and just one to the new one. That means nine points in total to the new Defender and six points to the old Defender. Now, if you'd like to see what happened when I took a bunch of hatchbacks off-roading on this off-road course, which is really funny, click on the pop-out banner up there to get and watch it. It's nuts. You'll be surprised how capable little hatchbacks are if you really don't care about damaging them. Now we come to the sixth and final challenge, and what we're going to do is drive up some steps, do a three-point turn, and come back down again. So this is going to test the chassis articulation of the vehicles and the ground clearance, and this new Defender certainly wins out on paper. It's got ground clearance of 291 millimeters. You can actually raise its air suspension even higher in emergencies if you really need to get yourself free. That old Defender doesn't have such <laughs> an ability to do that because it's got normal core spring suspension, so it could struggle. Also, its ground clearance is nowhere near as good as this to begin with, 245 millimeters. What I'm going to do, though, to give me another advantage, is put the terrain response into rock crawl mode, and I've got my clear sight camera working so it's basically a camera which looks forward and it can see what's underneath the car so you know exactly where to put your wheels all the modern tech helping me out poor old Land Rover doesn't have that go on then let's do it this is going to be much easier for me than him let's have a look at what he's doing you can really see the chassis working away the body's not moving much, but the suspension, the axles, and everything else are just twisting. Oh, 
Oh, I hope he's got his diff, his central diff lock done because his wheel's spinning there. Come on, give it some power, matey boy. Oh, look at that! Is he going to get up there at all? Cross axled. It's what? Cross axled. Cross axled. Yeah. What does that mean? Is it like checkmate for off roaders? Pretty much. Okay. <laughs> so what it means is because he hasn't got traction control. Yeah. Okay. Front wheel this wheel on the at that axle. It's yeah. Spinning. Yeah. Back wheel this side on the back axle. It's spinning. So you got one wheel on each axle spinning. Uh huh. Traction's gone. Let's see how easy it is for the new Defender. If it makes it up here, dead easy, this is going to be the perfect video to show anybody who says that the new Defender isn't as good off-road as the old one. Look at that. Walk in the quarry. I'm going to go back down it. I'll let the old Defender see <laughs> what it wasn't able to do. La la la, this is just so easy. Oh. I was getting a bit carried away there. That's the thing about this. It is so easy and so comfortable that you can get a bit carried away. I think that was obvious, wasn't it? So no points for the old Defender. Couldn't even get up there. Two points for this. So 11 points overall, six for that. Clear winner. I'd agree with that. Now, a lot of people were worried that this new Defender with its unibody chassis and air springs and independent suspension would not be as good off-road as the old one. Nonsense. People just don't like change, do they? The only people that don't like the new Defender are people who haven't driven it yet. Listen, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know of any other videos you'd like to see in the comments below. If you'd like to come and do some off-roading like this with the guys who've helped us out, including Graham, then the link is in the description below. Also, don't forget to check out Neem if you want to get yourself an old Land Rover, if you actually know how to drive off-road. And don't forget to make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on so you're alerted when we make a new upload. And if you'd like to see my full in-depth video review of this new Defender, which I think is very good, the car, and the review, click on the pop-out banner up there to go watch it now. Thanks for watching. Anyone who says that this you new- control access to your personal information. Shut it's up! designed to keep your information private, safe and secure. To view and change your privacy settings. Shut up, why is this even talking to me?